UNC Charlotte Botanical Gardens. And let me tell you, the excerpts we've got lined up history, mission, the works. This place is so much more than just pretty flowers, although I'm sure there are plenty of those too. Absolutely. So let's jump right in. What really got me was how these gardens even came to be. Yeah, you know, it's funny how these things happen. Back in 1966. Way back. Right, it all started with uh, Dr. Herbert Hesch and Bleichner and uh, Bonnie Cohn. They had this vision, right? A living museum, they called it. Okay, living museum. That's intriguing. I mean, I get the museum part. You think about like rows of ancient artifacts and stuff. But living, what do they mean by that? Well, it's kind of brilliant when you think about it. See, they understood that a botanical garden, it could be a place where you have conservation, education, and research all kind of intertwined. Okay. Like it's not just about looking at pretty plants. It's about actively preserving them, learning from them. It's a living, breathing thing, you know. So it's more than just aesthetics. Exactly. It's about protecting nature, learning from it. You mentioned research. What kind of research actually happens there? Oh, all sorts. Yeah. But remember that figure we saw? 80%. 80% of the plants there are native to the southeast. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. Right. And that's a big deal. See, the southeast, it's like a hidden gem for biodiversity, you know. But it's facing a lot of challenges too, like habitat loss and climate change. So the research that's happening at the gardens, it's all about understanding those plants, those ecosystems, and figuring out how to protect them. Wow, 80%. I had no idea the southeast was that diverse. I always think of like rainforests when I hear biodiversity. Yeah. <laughs> so paint a picture for me. What makes these gardens so special? What would I see there? Okay, so picture this. 10 acres. Go. 10 sprawling acres. And we're talking over 900 different species of plants. You've got the Susie Harwood Garden, perfect for like quiet contemplation, just zenning out, right? You can dig it. And then you've got the Ralph Van Landingham Glen, which is basically this little slice of old growth forest. Right in the middle of everything. Right in the heart of the gardens. Oh, and we can't forget the Macmillan Greenhouse, right? Yeah, that's right. The excerpts mention this incredible glass house. I'd love to hear more about that. What's it like in there? It's an experience, that's for sure. Almost 5,000 square feet of like pure plant magic. You step in there and the humidity hits you. You're surrounded by all these exotic plants. It's like you're in a tropical rainforest. That sounds amazing. And speaking of exotics, some of these plant names, they sound like something out of a movie. Don Redwood, for example. Is that like a Jurassic Park thing? It might as well be. It's this massive ancient tree. And get this, it was actually thought to be extinct until the 1940s. 